Hello everyone, I am Dr. Satya Narayana Garre. I am a consultant nephrologist, transplant physician and intervention nephrologist at Apollo Hospitals, Hyderabad. So today we will be looking at some frequently asked questions on kidney failure and we will try to find some answers to that. The first question, what is kidney failure? Now for whatever reasons, when kidneys in your body stops working, the nitrogenous waste or the waste products which are generally cleared by the kidney gets accumulated in the body. Now this is called as kidney failure. Generally there are two types of kidney failure. One is the temporary failure. In medical language we call it acute kidney injury. The other one is the chronic kidney disease. Uh, in uh, regular terminology we call it the permanent failure. Second question, what causes kidney failure? Now the leading cause of kidney failure which is the chronic kidney disease is the diabetes followed by hypertension and in some other conditions we have glomerulonephritis, autoimmune disease, hereditary kidney disorder, disorders and uh, uh, renal stone disease. These are the common causes of kidney failure in India. The third question is what are the signs of kidney failure? Now when you look at the signs of kidney failure, the different stages of the chronic kidney disease will have different signs and symptoms. Now in the early stages, uh, you will not have any signs and symptoms apart from the gradual rise in creatine and other parameters like urea and once the kidney starts failing to a certain extent, you will start developing symptoms like fluid overload which is the swelling in both your uh, legs and breathlessness and uh, you will have decreased appetite, nausea and vomiting. These are the most common symptoms which you see when you have kidney failure. The next question is how can you reduce the risk of kidney failure? Now the most and the easiest thing you can do is screening the high risk, uh, high risk individuals like people who are suffering from long term ailments like diabetes and hypertension. The recommendation is to screen at least once or twice a year for these patients with simple tests like urine examination and serum creatinine so that we can keep a track of uh, uh, the health of the kidneys in these patients. We can have a healthy diet by cutting down the, uh, the junk food which contains very high salt and also cutting down on high protein foods like meat consumption and uh, by leading a healthy lifestyle with at least 30 minutes of physical activity per day. So next question is how are kidney failures diagnosed? Now the most of the kidney disease uh, are asymptomatic uh, uh, and uh, the patients will become symptomatic once the kidney has significant dysfunction only. So the kidney disease is diagnosed by doing simple tests like complete urine examination and when you are on regular follow up you can do your serum creatinine and complete urine examination once a year and then uh, one, once you have uh, elevated creatinine you can uh, do kidney scanning with just simple ultrasound and then diagnose the kidney disease. However, some kidney disease requires more invasive procedures like renal biopsy and special blood test for the diagnosis. The next question is what is the best way to treat the kidney failure? Now depending, depending upon what stage of kidney failure you are in. So when you look at chronic kidney disease, it has five stages. The stage five is the last and where you go on to the dialysis and when you are in initial stages like one to uh, one to four, you try to alter your medications. If you have some amount of protein in the urine, you give some medications to reduce the protein in the urine. If you are overweight, you try to reduce the overweight. And if you have some other disease which are diagnosed on renal biopsy, you try to give some immunosuppressions to cure the disease. But once the kidney stage passes four and five, the options are only either transplant or continue on the dialysis. Next question is, can a person recover from kidney failure? Now this depends upon what kind of kidney failure you are having. As I mentioned previously, you have two kinds of kidney failure. One is the temporary failure which in the medical language we call acute kidney injury. The other one is the permanent failure which in the medical language we call it chronic kidney disease. Now generally in acute kidney injury, the chances of recovery are high around 60 to 70 percent. However, it depends upon what is the cause of the acute kidney injury or the temporary failure. However, in chronic kidney disease, the chances of recovery is very low and once the patient passes through the phases of chronic kidney disease, it's very unlikely that he will recover from the chronic kidney disease. The next question is, does the color of urine uh, define the kidney failure? Now to answer this, uh, again there are two kinds of kidney failure as I mentioned. In acute kidney injury or the temporary failure, one of the most common cause is infection and dehydration. And when you have dehydration, you can have very high colored or cola colored urines and when you have infection, you can have very high colored urine and foul smelling urines. However, in chronic kidney disease or the permanent failure, the urine will not give away much. Generally, they have very normal urine. It will not smell. The color of the urine will not change much. 
so to conclude uh, to prevent you from kidney failure you should have a healthy lifestyle keep yourself hydrated stay away from junk food avoid high meat and also have a healthy uh, healthy day by at least 30 minutes of uh, physical activity and if you are having any long term ailments please get yourself checked for at least once a year with computer examination and serum creatinine thank you